Hello, hello, and welcome back to Core. We're still uh, doing things. I'm not. I'm not really sure. We were in the cave. I don't know. Maybe we still are. Ah, uh, it's you know, it's it's whimsical music time, right? <clears throat> and it's there uh, where we finally see the lake that Gus was talking about. Well, I'm not sure I'd call it a lake, but it's huge nevertheless. The natural light coming from a huge open hole in the wall of the mountain reflects on the water, giving it an almost unnatural yet beautiful effect. It's also really interesting to see trees and vegetation inside the cave, even if the ceiling is covered by the mountain. But I guess plants get enough water and light coming from the a hole that leads outside, with a view of more distant mountains. I never thought I'd see anything like this in person. I just wish he could have seen this too. And none of us is saying anything. We're just taking it in, enjoying the experience. Only the uh, sound of Faust taking pictures can be heard. I notice that we're not exactly alone, but only, but only by a couple of people, and I think a guard in the distance. Uh, Faust was right. I don't know what to say. You just did. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you don't. Uh, you don't really have to say anything. This is really beautiful. I know, but I want to. I turn to look at Hector, curious as to what he means with that, but I see everyone is doing the same. He looks closer to the- yeah, he looks- he walks- walks closer to the edge of the lake. For a second, I think he's going to just walk into it, but he doesn't, standing there instead. I mean, I know I complain a lot about moving here and there, and that I'm not the easiest person to hang out with. And things haven't been easy lately either, and so I guess I was a bit worried I wouldn't be invited to this trip. It's a core, I mean. This is the moment, uh, yeah. Uh, there is a moment of silence between us right after Hector stops talking, expecting him to continue, but he doesn't. At least not immediately. I turned to look back at us, confused, before realizing he never finished his thought. Ah, I guess what I'm trying to say is, oh, thank you for inviting me here. I think I needed all of this. I have a small sense of deja vu, as if Hector was feeling similar similarly uh, to how Gus did before, uh, thinking we weren't friends enough to be here. Mike's the first one to walk next to him, wrapping his arm around his shoulder and pulling him closer, making Hector smile. What does that mean? Of course you were coming too. You're part of our group. And Faust follows him, uh, placing his hand between Hector's ears or ruffling his wool. It wouldn't be the same without you, and that's because you're our friend too. I hope you don't think like that too often. No, not at all. I guess I'm just grateful, well, that's all. But I appreciate this. He turns around to look at us, and core, uh, the core people uh, smiling sweetly. Uh, what about you? I want a hug from you all. Come on. Again, I think about making a joke about how weird it is for Hector to want physical contact, but I decide against it. It's not the time. Instead, I walk closer to Ed and join the hug, almost squeezing the sheet between all of us. After all, uh, all of us but Gus, who I noticed stayed behind. Gus, get your ass here. You're part of us too. Gus's face lights up as he hears Hector saying it, and I can hear his inner tone sounding more cheerfully. Cheerful. We told him already he's part of us, but I guess he was hesitant about Hector because uh, maybe he needed this too. Right away. He joins us, running towards us and almost jumping at us, so we had to uh, hold everyone back as we didn't, uh, so we didn't end up in the lake by the ac by accident. Gus. I have the camera here. If we fall it, wait, if we uh, fall it could break. I'm being crushed. Uh, Gus, why? <laughs> that was a good glomp, though. I'm dying. Hmm. Okay. The size of the, uh, the size of the cave is bigger than we uh, thought initially, so we decide to split up and wander around on our own for a bit. It's okay, I'm okay with that, since we can still see each other, even if it's from afar. <clears throat> and because I think we all want 
I had to take in the tranquility of this place on our own. At least I'm glad I'm having some time to myself for myself. No, excuse me. I know I've been insistent with having to spend time together. But maybe I should try to avoid being alone that much. I mean, everyone's still here, after all. No one's going away. I decide to stay near the lake shore, watching the water calmly rest, unlike, unlike the sea I'm so used to seeing now. There's a very... There's a very light, calming sound coming from the water, and I can't help but to feel at peace. The urge to feel that water grows on me, and I look at, yeah, and I uh, look around, and no one's near me. And besides, Faust said it's okay to touch it, as long as you don't jump in. I carefully lean forward and sink my hand to the clear water. It's cold, but it doesn't bother me. I smile when I see the small waves of water moving out, moving away from my hands and towards the rest of the lake, as if, at the moment, I matter to something in the world. My hand slowly moves, and trying to feel more of the relaxing cold, yeah, the relaxing cold from the water, without altering it too much, but I stop shortly after. If Faust would tell me not to lean too close to the lake or something, if I stay here too long... I stand up, holding my headphones, while I do that with one hand, before having a small panic attack, thinking I'm getting them wet. <laughs> but that, uh, but they don't work anymore. It's nothing more than a memento that I have, that I like having around. It makes me feel more like myself when I wear it. When I wear them, I guess. Or maybe they just make me feel more like how I felt before. I see Ed coming towards me, and Gus and Mike uh, behind from afar than from far away, and I try not to think about this right now. After a few minutes, they catch up to me, Mike waving his hand eagerly while Ed rushes to meet me as soon as possible. Damn, Rob, this place is amazing, don't you think? I can't wait to see Faust's photos later. I'm pretty sure they'll be really good, yes. Anyway, Mike and I are pretty hungry right now, and I'm sure Hector won't complain if we head out to eat those sandwiches. What about you? Right, I mean, I'm not sure how long we've been here, because I feel I could uh, stay for a couple more hours, but... I pat my stomach, acknowledging that I'm pretty hungry too, and I'm a bit excited to eat the sandwich I prepared, my, prepared my, myself before. I'm, I'm doing the thing. Uh, count me in. Nice. Uh, let's get going, then. Faust and Hector are ahead, so we can tell them as we go. I nod my I nod my head before walking next to Ed, is still having to I still having the other two behind me. Admittedly, walking our way back while my hunger increases is not ideal, and at least most of the way is walking down the stairs, so it's not as hard. We end up stopping on a, a spot on the sidewalk. Uh, since there's a rock of since there's a couple of rocks where we can rest to I rest to eat, and the place looks as pretty as ever. As any. I don't know why, but my mind auto-corrected that. Whoops. Besides, we're alone here, and we're tired and hungry, so might as well. I get my sandwich, and I take a bite the moment it's in my hands. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy with how it tastes. No complaining from this ferret. I have to say, I love this place. And I took almost... It took om I took almost a thousand photos. But it's a bit sad to almost see no people around. Is this normal? Uh, first of all, I'm not sure. This is my first time here, too. Uh, Gus, I uh, guess that kinda, kinda answers the question. I always wanted to come with other people, uh, but I also thought I'd all, I'd have all the time in the world to come whenever, right? I guess everyone else thinks the same way. Maybe it's a good thing that this cave didn't show up until we were in Morlin. I'm pretty sure our school would have taken us here at some point. And I have no doubt in my mind that at least one kid would have drowned if we visited here, so... Robert, sweetie, you, your hate for children is showing. I don't hate them. I just think they're ugly abominations that look awful. They're like weird malformed blobs of flesh. They're the, the scariest things to look at. Uh, I just uh, don't want them close to me if possible. Well, if there's a secretly wait, if there's security around the place and it's w and it's so well known, I'm sure it'll get its fair share of visitors. 
It's at the beginning of the summer, so people might come here in, in the future days. Always so positive. Uh, make sure you're not that positive when it comes to STDs. Whoa, where did that come from? Divine inspiration. Uh, probably a miracle from the cave. Uh, Hector can be dangerously savage when he wants. Only when I know they can take it. And I know Mike gets up immediately, even if you push him off a cliff. I appreciate your faith in me, but don't push me off a cliff, please. You'd probably bounce back, knowing you. I snicker at the visual of that situation. Mike just falling off and bouncing back, confused. Anyway, I take a step. What the? What was that? Okay. Take a step in the conference so I can continue eating. Okay. I just heard something. I know what it was, but I feel like my uh, brain is go is trying not to process it. As if, um, whatever I heard is going to hurt if I think about it. Did I just imagine it? But... Afaka! His fucking tone is coming through my headphones. I throw them away to the ground, confused, and I feel everyone's eyes focusing on me all of a sudden. I heard it. I fucking heard it two times from my headphones, but it's not possible. No, oh, okay. R Robert! Are you okay? What happened? Ed's hand rests on my shoulder, and I know it's Ed's hand, but for a moment it's not. I shake. Uh, I shake it, standing up, starting to panic. Deep breaths, Robert. Please. Robert, hey, what's wrong? From the corner of my eye, I see Mike standing up and Faust stopping him, since he was going to hold me. I try to gather my thoughts, uh, but I don't know how to explain what I just heard. I can, f I can feel I'm starting to tear up. What the fuck? Why now? Why this? I just heard Jacob. Complete silence. I'm still trying to focus on what to say, so I'm not paying attention to them, but I don't I don't even hear them breathing. The headphones. I heard his music, his tone. It can't be, but I heard it. Robert. I have a hard time speaking, and I try to calm down, but I can't. Deep breathe, de <laughs> deep breaths uh, that are very short. I don't understand. Can it be that you had a recording of him? Or maybe he called you? I stare at Gus, but not really looking at him. Called me? I mean, maybe... Uh, Gus! I think I see Mike's hand on his leg, and Gus looking at, at him back, confused, almost annoyed. He doesn't know. Not his fault. He's dead. I think he turns his head to look at me again, but I can't tell. The moment I say those words, I can't hold back anymore. I sit on the ground, or maybe I fall, and I cry. I hug my leg, and I think Ed hugs me. I can't really see or understand. I, I can't call anyone. He's dead. I think I heard Gus um, whispering something. I didn't know that. Uh, how could you know? <laughs> I hear nothing but my own sobbing. I didn't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I don't want it to, to be true. I thought I'd moved on, but I can't even think about it. Then some footsteps, getting closer to me. And then someone kneeling down in front of me. What do you mean, you've heard him? I thought... He swallows. He's trying not to cry like me. Through the headphones, his tone. I thought... We were over this. You can't hear the tone of someone who's not here. No! His tone, uh, his tone of voice sounds rough, wounded. His inner tone is agitated. Even Ed moved away after hearing it. I still feel his hand on my back, uh, I'm, uh, though I'm not moving. Robert, don't. Don't do this, please. I thought uh, this was going to help. Uh, let's not do this again. I didn't choose to hear that. I know what he means, and I wish I could. But I didn't choose this. I didn't want to do this. But I can't ignore the fact that I heard him. I just heard his tone. Jacob is dead, Robert. It fucking hurts. He's gone. You can't hear him. It can't be. I can't pretend he's not gone. He stands up, breathing heavily, 
and Ed uh, hugs me tightly. I don't move. My body has, has had enough. We can't do this. He's dead. We need to respect that. I need... He doesn't continue. Probably holding back, then. He steps away somehow. Uh, somewhere. I don't look, so I don't know where. Shit. You guys stay here, Mike. Then, Faust. I guess he went after him. And then, I'm not sure. At some point, I stopped feeling Ed next to me, and I also moved back to the stone I was sitting, bo I was sitting before. I remember Hector saying he'll take care of the headphones or something. Yeah, just throw them in the trash, it's fine. And I think Gus and Ed are talking. I don't think he knows how to process this. I don't think any of us know. At least, that's what I think. Until I hear Hector uh, talking to me. His inner tone feels nervous, but calm. It's subtle. <laughs> hey, Rob, can we talk? Calmly. I'm not going to snap at you. I nod, still not looking at him. I don't know what you heard just now, or if it was real or not, but you wouldn't uh, make that up. I believe you. I appreciate it. I was feeling like a, I was losing my mind. I don't understand why I heard him. I can't hear him. I shouldn't. And I understand this. It's tough and uh, horrible for you. I want you to remember that we're all here for you. His hand rusts on my back, rubbing it. And this time, I don't feel uncomfortable. It's delicate, respectful. Uh, but I guess. And I don't want to sound like a dick. I'm just trying to understand why things happened, but... I guess you have to remember you're not the only one grieving. We all knew Jacob. And it's been tough for all of us. I can't pretend to understand how you or Mike are feeling. But I know you two were feeling really in intense things, and... He sighs and stops, probably thinking how to phrase something. Yeah, I guess it's not really easy to hurt someone by accident when you're only thinking of yourself. It's really easy. Okay. Not it's not, but it's really easy. Okay. I'm not blaming you, though. I'm just trying to uh, be objective. I'll, I'll talk to with Mike, too. I'm sure he didn't mean to snap at you. I lean towards Hector, and he seems surprised, but he lets me... Uh, but he lets me. I'm not. I'm not crying anymore. I'm just processing. He's right, though. I can't be selfish. I'm not the only one hurting. But we were living together. We had plans together. We had a future together. I can't just not be angry or sad about it. Part of me wants to be angry. He was a good friend, but he was so much to me. I'm sorry. I just can't even think of him. I've been avoiding thinking about him or his name this whole trip. Even before that. I just don't want to feel that empty again. So alone, I think nothing mattered anymore. Like I lost... Like I lost him. My arm wraps around him and Hector, and hold Hector tightly, and he doesn't fight it. He keeps holding me delicately. I'm so sorry, Robert, but your life is not over. Remember that. I nod painfully. Sometimes it doesn't feel... I feel like it, though. You're right here. And you made a choice. You chose to fight. To live. Being here is proof of that. Again, I nod, tearing up again. Tearing up again. It's so hard, though. I just want to scream, but I hold back. It's natural to hurt. It sucks, but it means you're here, and I'm really proud of you for that. He moves his hands, carefully, trying not to startle me. I feel them on my face, slowly making me look at him. It's embarrassing, because I can't hold back my tears, or how much this hurts, but he smiles. Uh, the day you woke up on the hospital bed after a week was one of the most relieving days I've ever experienced. It made me feel hope again. You gave me the strength to be who I am today, Robert. So, I know it's hard, but... His voice cracks as he's about to keep... Wait, as he's about to keep talking. Okay. Keep living, even if it hurts. We love you, and we need you here. I'm feeling overwhelmed with how direct Hector is being, but... Uh, fuck if I needed that. I hug him tightly, and he stops being delicate, uh, pressing me towards... Pressing me hard against him. I think I hear him crying, but it's fine. 
We're allowed to cry. I will. I'll never stop. I promise. I'm sorry if I scared you. I don't care. It's fine. You're here. Alright. Uh, I think I'll end the part here, everyone. So I will see you around. <laughs>